Thanks for being with us for the Savvy Ladies Wednesday Wisdom Webinar. I'm Maggie Montemuro, and I'm the Marketing Manager at Savvy Ladies. I would like to take a second to remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into the chat box or email info at SavvyLadies.org. Today's presenters are Kimberly Mishkin and Lisa Caldwell, co-founders of SAS for Women, which provides divorce coaching and support for women who are considering, in the process of, or recovering from divorce. Kimberly is a certified divorce coach and a grief recovery specialist. Lisa is a certified professional coach recognized by the International Coach Federation. The mission of SAS for Women is to provide women comprehensive support as they navigate and grow from the process of major life changes. I would like to thank you, Kim and Lisa, for joining us today, and let's get started. Thanks, Maggie. We're so happy to be here today, and thank you to Savvy Ladies for inviting us here, and welcome to everyone joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Kimberly Mishkin, and I'm here with my partner, Lisa Caldwell, and as Maggie mentioned, together we founded SAS for Women, Support and Solutions for Thriving Beyond Divorce. We look forward to sharing today the three steps to minimizing the emotional and financial costs of your divorce. But before we get started, Lisa, would you mind telling everybody a little bit more about SAS? Hi, everybody. And I hope you're all women. And if not, welcome the random male. <laughs> uh, SAS for women. Uh, we are educators and coaches uh, who founded a, a company dedicated to trying to educate women about what the divorce terrain looks like. It's coming from our own personal stories. We're divorced women. Uh, and what we do is we educate you on what the process looks like and we coach you uh, into understanding and addressing what your fears and confidence challenges may be as you face the unknown. If you hang out for the entire part of our presentation, You'll hear more about us at the end. If you do not, I encourage you to check out our website, SAS, S-A-S, for women.com, where we have many articles, checklists, um, suggestions that you might consider uh, if you're thinking about divorce or if you're actually even in the process of recovering and rebuilding your life. I'm looking forward to today. Excellent. Well, let's get started. So uh, while we can't ask for a show of hands um, as much as we'd like to, chances are that many of you have signed up to listen today because you're either thinking about divorce or you're in the midst of one. You've probably heard or you know firsthand actually that divorce does come at a cost monetarily and emotionally. And perhaps this is, this is exactly what's holding you back or giving you pause at least. It's really scary, right? The prospect of turning your whole life upside down to trade it in for who knows what it's all unknown it's a really scary prospect but we're willing to bet something inside of you really wants and needs something different you aren't happy it isn't working and it's gotten bad enough that now you are ready to consider other possibilities ways to maybe move forward Today, we're gonna to share with you some key ideas, some ways to help you better understand your landscape. This will give you a plan to get started. Let's look at the emotional landscape you may be facing. We often hear women describe divorce as a, an emotional roller coaster. Take a minute. Do you see yourself anywhere on this map? You didn't know it was so colorful, did you? <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot to take in. One minute, you may find yourself in a really hopeful place. Hopeful you can fix it, or that you guys will reconcile, or that maybe he'll just go along with the divorce peacefully and without an ugly argument. The next minute, you're feeling dark and depressed because it becomes very clear he's gonna fight you tooth and nail or just because it's so overwhelming and exhausting just in general. You might have flashes of anger. You cannot believe he's doing this to you. Or moments when you sink really low, feeling really guilty and remorseful 
because it feels like you are the one tearing your family apart. What we know is that this emotional roller coaster is, it, sorry about that. What we know about this emotional roller coaster is that it is fueled by a combination of fear and confusion. And almost always, two things rise to the top of that long list of worries the kids and the finances. Whew, look at that list. <laughs> And I bet you can think of even more. Oh, yeah. These are just the ones that pop up. Exactly. The financial decisions to be made during this process are biggies. I mean, the, you, you may not even understand all of it at first. And you probably, but I bet you see the dollar signs associated with all of it immediately. Lawyers are expensive. Moving is expensive. Now there will be two households to pay for instead of one. You may be wondering if you have to go back to work or worrying that one or both of you will have to delay your retirement. Investments and properties have to be evaluated. Health insurance and life insurance have to be assessed. And what about the kids' tuition for college? And on and on. Yeah, and if you've never handled the finances, ladies, uh, like me, <laughs> I didn't know, I admit this now, I didn't then, I didn't even know what a mortgage was. I pretended I did. I bluffed really well, but I didn't know the first thing about anything related to the money. I deferred, deferred to him. Well, and even in the best of marriages, we divide and conquer. You know, I, even if you're, you do have some financial sense, you may be dividing and conquering what's going on at home, and it may have been a while since you've had your hand on the family finances, and it's kind of like starting over. That's right, but just looking at this list gives me anxiety even now. <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And you know what it really boils down to? This all has to be taken care of, but it really boils down to you just want to know, am I going to be okay? Are the kids going to be okay? Those are the two things that really rise to the surface. The important thing to remember here is, yes, this is complex, but you don't have to, and nor should you, try to figure this out alone. Let us tell you why you shouldn't attempt to do this all by yourself. It's a dizzying mix, worrying about your kids and how they will react and worrying about whether you will be financially okay or able to provide for your kids. It's really stressful. It's probably one of the hardest times you will ever face in your life. It's the emotions, it's the decisions, all that are requiring you to be a grown-up girl but you know what simultaneously you are on stress amphetamines yeah stress and, and you know what we know about stress when you're in that that when you're on those amphetamines so to speak and you're tr stressed to the hilt simply put it compromises your problem solving and your rational thinking you're literally you're literally not able to think straight when you're consumed with anxiety yeah, so stop blaming yourself. Don't think that you should know this, that it should be intuitive or what's wrong with you. Because what we know is that stress physically impacts you and impairs your thinking. That's right, when you think you have to do it all. You've probably already noticed signs at one point or another. I mean, this is a short list here that we're gonna give you, but we could triple this list without even thinking about it. But are you finding yourself forgetful? Are you having sleepless nights or do you find yourself wanting to sleep too much? Weight loss and weight gain are very common. Clumsiness, I was a total klutz during my divorce. I had bruises and broken bones and sprained ankles left and right. Or how about at the end of the day, you'd look at your hand or you'd see something on your thigh and you, it would be a bruise. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even remember where you got it. No, I think I was just running into furniture and just numb to it all. <laughs> um, dizziness. I even had a, a bout of vertigo that took, you know, I ended up in the doctor with it, but the vertigo got pretty bad. Um, headaches, stomach aches, neck and shoulders locking up. You're feeling like you're, you know, stiff and sore all the time. You're feeling really old, not only at the prospect of reinventing your life, but your body is feeling really old. You're feeling it. Absolutely. And it's, you don't even, sometimes you don't connect the dots. I didn't. You know, I kept thinking, oh, this is unfortunate. I keep getting sick and I'm having all these accidents and boy, what a rough year. And I didn't connect it to the fact that it was stress eating away at my body and that it was 
all the same source. I, I really didn't make a connection at the time. Stress really does come, uh, man, it's man manifests itself in endless ways. And it's a lot to manage and it really takes a toll on our mind and our body. Today, we purposely kept our presentation on the short side because we know this, when you're, in, when you're in a stressful place, it's difficult to take in a lot of information at once. And when you're in, under this kind of pressure, we'd rather you be able to walk away today with a very clear idea of our message rather than throw everything we know at you at once. <laughs> Yeah, and another thing we know, Kim, is that there are approximately 70 of you on this call mm -hmm. today. So we, as an aside, I just want to remind you that you feel really alone. Mm -hmm. You feel stress. But look, there are 70 of you on this call from across the country. We're basing our knowledge and what we're telling you on what we know from our own personal experiences and what we know from women. I want you to understand that there are universalities here that we want to share. Yeah, absolutely. One of those is, one second. <laughs> one of those things would be great is if Lisa could move the slide so we could read our script. Here's the key takeaway for today. We want you to recognize this. You need support period, the end. They need support? Yeah. Okay, so our job is done. Okay. Well, we're even shorter than we thought we'd be, <laughs> ladies. No, the reality is we can tell you this probably a million times, but you might still be frozen. You might be frozen with indecision, unsure how to go about anything right now, let alone whom to ask for support. How do you even begin? We have a way to get you started. You will begin by following our simple advice. You will act. That's A-C-T, ladies. You're not, we're not suggesting you take up a role acting in a Shakespearean play. Yeah, and even though there are moments probably where that you are kind of faking it until you make it, acting, so to speak, that's not what we mean today. We're being very specific about three steps you can take to change your momentum. Uh, we want to get you out of that place of stress, anxiety, and indec indecision and fear, shifting you to a place of knowledge and forward momentum, a place where you feel more empowered to make the right decision for you and your family. Let's get started with A. A stands for actively seek advisors. You will build a team to get you through this. I repeat. <laughs> You will build a team to get through this. You will not do this in isolation or alone. That's right. And you don't have to. There are a lot of sources out here that can act as resources for you. So advisors come in a lot of forms. You definitely need your closest friends and family for sure. Those you trust and you know will be a good shoulder to cry on. Very important. You probably already know, also know you'll need legal help and possibly financial advisors to inform you and guide you through the decision-making process throughout the divorce. You may want to consult your physician. I know I did with all the things that were going on with my body. Oh, that's right, Klutzy Kim. <laughs> um, and, or your spiritual guides, depending on uh, if you have a good connection with your church or your synagogue. The guidance counselor at your kid's school might be a great resource for helping your kids through this and your family too. They actually probably helped many families before you. I, and also, you know, I'll add, Kim, it, it doesn't hurt as well to consider therapists for your children, not just the, the guidance counselor at the school, but sometimes your kids need a neutral space to go where they can vent because they don't want to carry the story between the parents. Some place where they can go that's safe is really recommended. So don't overlook therapists for your kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because the truth is your kids are their own, on their own trajectory of healing. And it's, it's different than grownups and they need to have a safe, neutral place to talk. And so that's, I'm glad you brought that up. So speaking of emotional support, we would highly recommend that you consider working with a therapist or a divorce coach or both. A therapist will certainly help you with the underlying emotional issues. If you're feeling like you might be depressed or having some other anxiety related issues, a therapist is a great place to go for help. A coach is a little different. Coaches like Lisa and I, help you coordinate all of what's going on practically and emotionally. Someone, a coach is someone who can give you objective feedback and help you get the right, ask the right questions 
and find your true answers as you go forward. Both a therapist and a coach are people with whom you can feel safe to vent, to cry, to grieve, and to make a plan for how to heal. Yeah, I like to think of us as a safe space. I, I, we go through boxes, actually crates <laughs> of tissues here, because this is where women are supposed to feel comfortable with unloading. They have to be protective everywhere else in the world. They have to be strategic often. But at the end of the day, you need a safe place to go where you can be real and confront yourself and also be held. Yeah, absolutely. C. The C stands for collect information. This is your job right now. The more you learn, the more the fear of the unknown will subside because you'll be operating from a place of knowledge and not fear. Exactly what you're doing here today, actually. You know, our gut tells us that you're here because you're, you're, you're somewhere on some level, you know you need more information. We are, after all, in the information age and it's at our fingertips get online, start reading, start connecting. Some things you can do. Learn the divorce laws in your state. Line up free consultations with professionals whenever possible. You never know what you will learn. Go to as many as you can. Some attorneys, many, many financial planners, many, many coaches, therapists are all willing to consult with you to see if it's a good fit. And you'll, you're guaranteed to learn a little something each time that you connect with somebody in that world. At the end of this presentation, we'll share how you can connect with us for free. And we encourage you to take advantage of that because you, we know you'll walk away with good information. Whether you work with us further or not, you'll walk away with something. Here's an important one. Talk to your friends who have been through a divorce. They've walked the path and they've learned a lot of things the hard way. They have really good stories to share with you. Yeah, yeah and I'm all for learning hard things vicariously <laughs> and not firsthand, ladies. No kidding. <laughs> No kidding. I think you should look for support groups to connect with others who can share resources in their stories. It's, there is comfort in the community of people who have been through it before. Uh, we've often recommended people look on meetup.com, especially mm -hmm. in the urban areas. There's a lot of groups forming more and more across the country. Um, and if you just put a search in near you, you're guaranteed to find something that you can try out to see if, to see if it's a good support for you. The more you know, the more prepared you'll be when it's time to make important decisions. One final thought. We cannot emphasize this enough. Ladies, when you're gathering information and getting educated on what's possible for you, this does not mean you're definitely getting divorced. All it means is you're getting informed. And getting informed and educated is what smart women do. It's what brought you to the call today. That's right. The third part of this act or action stop is to take a, take a real step. Start small, start today. But you know what? A baby step will do just fine. It doesn't have to be a big move. It really doesn't actually matter what it is. What's important is that you do something differently. If you take one step, no matter how small, the confidence that brings you will help you get some traction and you'll be able to, you'll have a little bit of momentum to do more. Yeah, that's right, Kim. It builds, the momentum builds. And you know, the anxiety is often the worst part, that pre-action or contemplative state of where you are just before you hit the unknown. But if you start doing one little thing, it starts to break it down. Doing something breaks things down. It makes movement possible. Right. So everybody stop for a second and think about what's that thing you've been meaning to do, but you haven't gotten around to it yet? Maybe start a journal, record your thoughts and all the information that you'll be gathering from all these different meetings. I hope you have a pen and pad now. <laughs> Get outside for some exercise. I'm guilty of that one. When I get busy or overwhelmed, that's often the first thing to do that, that goes for me. And it's a huge shift when I get outside in the sunshine, for sure. Get something on the calendar with an attorney or a financial planner or a divorce coach. Just getting it on the calendar almost guarantees you'll go and that you're guaranteed to get there. Uh, yeah, and ladies, don't be ashamed by your stories. Don't let that hold you back from meeting with a professional. I'm going to remind you 
those people are professionals and they have heard everything. Your story is unique, that's right, but you can bet they've got others. So get over your shame. Yeah. And you know what? Almost all of those meetings are confidential. So you can feel safe and nobody needs to know you went, you know, make it quietly, pop in for an appointment, take your notes. And you really have to be the only one that knows that you're in this information gathering mode. As for your life, apart from the possible divorce, make plans with a friend, clean out a closet, whatever it is that you think to yourself, yeah, I can do that. Start there. Start there. So we're going to make it easy for you to get started, actually. As we mentioned, we do offer free consultations in our office and to women around the world through the telephone or Skype. It's completely confidential. We promise you'll walk away with black and white information and a mini action plan customized for you. You can email us to find out more or make an appointment. And our email is smartsupport at sasforwomen.com. Or, as Lisa mentioned at the beginning of the call, please jump on our website, www.sasforwomen, S-A-S-F-O-R-W-O-M-E-N.com, because we do have lots and lots of resources there. Uh, there are videos, there are stories, there's lots of things that you can tap into in the comfort of your own home until you're ready to connect with us. And our content contact information is here, but also no savvy ladies will be following up with you by email to share our contact information and a recording of today's presentation. And you know, we get it. It's, it's hard to start even talking about your story. So if you're not ready for a consultation, then still stay connected and supported. Visit our website and you can join our list for six free months of email coaching. It'll come discreetly to your inbox and it'll help you keep things alive in your head, honoring your instincts, honoring your needs. It's just between yourself at that, at that point. So you don't need to feel so all alone. Sign up at, on our website and here's the pitch, <laughs> sassforwomen.com. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've been inspired to act on our advice. Just to recap, act, actively seek those advisors, collect information, and take a step, one step at a time. And remember what stress can do to you, can do to us. So take care of yourself first and foremost. Now we'll open it up for questions, Meg, please rejoin us. <laughs> Thank you, Kim and Lisa. Um, so if you have any questions now, you can type them into the chat box or email info at SavvyLadies.org. And one of the questions we had come in is, my close friends and family have never gone through a divorce, so I can't get advice from them, but I know they'll support me. I just worry that they might not truly understand what I'm going through. So how can I ask for their support and still tune out the negative things that they'll say about my ex? Yeah, that's a really good question. Very normal. Mm -hmm. So our, our family and friends love us, right? But it's really hard for them to suspend their, their judgment and their own agendas, especially if they haven't been through divorce. So that's right. You want to hold them in a special space in your heart where you're listening to them because you're gonna to need to turn to them for all kinds of support now and throughout your life. But you need to also have a boundary and recognize that beyond that line, you need concrete black and white information. You need financial information probably. You need to understand what are possible legal paths for you. So, you acknowledge your family and you have to, this is a part about growing up as you have to say, I take it in, but there are other places where I'm going to turn to become informed. And you're going to get some consultations with people. You're going to go in with questions. And of course, we recommend that you work with someone who can help you through the entire trajectory and help you create those questions and who will give you that objective feedback that you need about divorce. And that's the pitch for a divorce coach. 
But you know what? You can also find that in a friend who's been divorced. She'll understand that there's a whole lot more to it. I think the other part of that too is it's true. They, they do go negative on you. Um, and I think the way to prevent that is if you have safe places to vent, if you, if you go on and on and on with your family about the thing he did and can you believe this and, I, and, and you spill everything, it does you know, put things in a negative light. And it's important to vent those, but, but when you're venting to your family, they have a hard time being objective. So a therapist, a coach, a good friend who's outside of, you know, not friends with your soon to be ex, those are places that are, it's a little safer to kind of spill those stories and process them. And when you're with your family, you might want to just be a little bit more, a little more reserved, I guess, and a little bit more careful about which stories you share to share with which people. It's not okay. I mean, it's, you know, you don't want to grab the guy at the mailbox and tell him your whole life, life story. No. And, um, but, and we, uh, many, many divorced women have made that mistake. I couldn't stop talking to anyone who would listen, but I regretted it later. So I've kind of learned since then, pick, pick who you're talking to and who you're telling what to. Um, and tell your family that you, that you value their support and a shoulder to cry on and taking you to the movies and watching your kids if they can and the ways that they can help that are healthy and not just negative talk. Hope that answers your, your question. Great. Thank you. Another question we had come in is, what do you do if the soon-to-be ex won't support my kids going to a therapist? That is a sticky one. Um, I think it's it's hard to just generally answer this question, not knowing your details and what's going on with the divorce case and whether you have attorneys involved or not. But I think the place I might start is looking at research, finding articles that may be parenting articles that may be pointing to why it's such a good uh, support for your children. Lisa and I are both former educators, both parents. We understand it from an angle, which is we've seen it work. Um, I worked in the elementary schools for many years. Guidance counselors, again, we, I know we mentioned that once, are a great resource and can point to even more articles and books. Um, maybe if you can't get your husband to agree to go right into therapy with the, with the doctors, start with children's books, start with online resources, start with, I know there are certain movies and things that you can, can do to get your kids started. Understanding that they aren't alone, this happens to other kids, that there are healthy ways to talk about it, then there's many children's books that will give them some language to talk to you about it. In the meantime, maybe your husband will see that or your spouse will see that that's starting to help your kids open up and that there might be some value in therapy. That's a place to start. And sometimes it's a power play with your, mm -hmm. your, your step ex, right? Your soon to be <laughs> ex. Uh, he's not going to do it. He's not going to agree because that would mean capitulating to you. So if you could make the suggestion come from, say, your children's teacher or guidance counselor, have it be recommended by someone whom your Stibix, uh respects, then you'd be amazed actually how he might be open to the idea. But if the school can suggest it, then you have to say to your Stebix, look, this is coming from the school. The school thinks this is a good idea. And why aren't you in support of helping our children manage this the best way possible? We hope that was helpful. Feel free. We, we could expound on that. Feel free to call us. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Another question is, should you tell the whole family the reasons why you are divorcing? Like you discovered your husband is a cheater, liar, financially irresponsible. What are the pros and cons of sharing this information or keeping it to yourself? Well, there's there's some that's a great question. There's there's some background noise, but I, I think we're hearing this as what are the pros and cons of sharing all the details with your family? And again, there is no black and white answer to this because everybody's story is different. So I invite the writer, the question to, to give us a call. But no, as with everything, it's not in your interest to divulge everything. Here's what we know. You actually have limited resources right now. That means limited time, li limited tongue power even. So you have to use your resources really strategically and effectively. It's not in your interest to talk and to share all the details. That's time taken away from your managing other things that are much more pressing. 
So what you want to do is target those people who are really significant and who really do need to know the details. Uh, but my suspicions are that often people don't need to hear all the crass color because it is just that. It's a deflection and a distraction. So think about what's strategic to share and who are the strategic players who must be informed. I think also recognize two things. One, the reason it feels like you should be telling everybody these things is because you're in a place of pain and maybe you're incredulous that these things have happened, he's done these things to you and you're thriving a little bit, we all do, on the drama of it because it's so fresh and new and you're processing it yourself. And often as women, we process by talking out loud. That's right. So, and I, I did this. So I, I think, recognize where you are. Recognize what you need. You do need to process. You do need to see laid out all these things that are happening. You do need a witness. But I would suggest, first of all, start with your journal. Write down everything. so that It will help you process it. You'll have a record of it. You can go back and look at it. But it's a private place to start. And I will share a personal story, which was I was in a pretty crazy situation myself with an ex. I left an abusive situation. I did tell everybody everything that was going on. But you know what happened? Fast forward a few years, I was able to look at it through a much different lens. I had really grown through the process. And I didn't feel as strongly about it as I did when I was in the heat of the moment. And I didn't come away hating my ex. Um, but I kind of left a path for people to, to villainize him. And I regret that now. I honestly do. I wish I had kind of kept my t circle tighter of who I was talking to because the reality is I knew it was coming from that painful place and not, I wasn't filtering it at all. And I wasn't thinking about things rationally at the time. So now I look back and I think, you know what, I, I didn't need to tell everybody everything. And in fact, it's, if depending on what's going on, it's a little embarrassing. So I, I think now it, I would recommend that you start with a journal, a very close circle of friends who you know can be objective and, and keep your confidence and let them help you process it and check in with yourself, you know, six months, a year from now and see who needs to know what. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next question here is with near to or grown up children, it can be hard to get them to therapy. Uh, do you have any suggestions? I do. I certainly know that. So Kim, Kim alluded to something earlier, which is that this is a healing process. And often we defer that healing until we get through the critical fires and the decision making. But make no mistake about it. There's going to be a healing process. Your process of going through the whole divorce story is different from what your kids are gonna go through. They're on their own trajectory. So don't look for uh, them being in sync with you on that journey. As I say, they're, on a, they're in a different process. Recognize that they too need their outlets and that's why we mentioned a therapist for them earlier and I'm hearing the question which is they're resisting it. Uh, it depends on how old they are. Uh, maybe they're resisting it again because it's coming from you, mom. Mm -hmm. And if someone else suggested it, as if a teacher or someone they respect suggested that they have a place to be able to vent, then maybe they would take it in differently. Maybe that person is a mentor in their life and maybe that's the kind of person that they can feel comfortable talking to. The important thing is to make them feel like they have outlets and that they don't have to hold it all in by themselves. You don't want them to feel like that they have to go to their peers with it, but you want to constantly give them opportunities to not feel guilty about you and that you're not going to view it as a betrayal, but you want to give them neutral spaces and keep offering it up to them. You can't, when they're a certain age, you can't force them to do anything, but you can keep suggesting it in, in direct and roundabout ways. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question here is, my friends advise me to not get out lawyered. What does that mean? I've, I've heard that too. I think the there's kind of a, a thinking which is you gotta go for the big guns, you gotta go for the most expensive, most powerful, most 
quote unquote, well-known famous attorney that you can because the big dogs are better. Um, and I think when the comment out lawyered, somebody is trying to tell you that maybe your spouse's attorney is quote unquote, bigger, better, better than yours. Uh, I don't find that to be true. I think Lisa, I'd like you to chime in here too, but I think we take very great care in lining up clients with the right attorney based on their circumstances, based on the big picture. And we partner with many amazing, high integrity attorneys um, from all over actually that don't have to be a big dog. Um, so I think there's a, there's a little bit of a misnomer being out, out lawyered. I mean, it's, it's, it's a knee jerk response and there, and your friends are trying to be protective of you. And there is some truth to it. You, you, but it's very complicated and, and difficult for us to give you a black and white answer to this question, sort of without knowing what city you're in, or if you're in a small town, there are a number of things to take into consideration. It is helpful if the lawyers know each other. So when your story ends, you want lawyers who are continuing to work together professionally. Uh, if they know each other, it's very helpful because they know how to negotiate and you do want to avoid court if you can help it. So if you've got a lawyer in the same bracket as the other lawyer, it's certainly potentially good, mm -hmm. right? But again, there are many, many things to drill down here. The fact is, is you want a lawyer who's going to make you feel heard, who's really listening to you, who is taking, who is keeping you informed. Uh, th those are bigger, louder uh, signals to you than I would say than just plunking down a twenty thousand dollar retainer and assuming that's going to take care of it, and you've bought the big dog. No, there's a lot of dimensions beneath that that you have to take into consideration. A lot of lawyers are patronizing, and let's face it, we're women, and we um, we respond differently differently to authority figures, which is why it's really important to have someone who listens to you, and who's who makes you feel like, yeah, that lawyer's got my back, yeah. and is going to do the right thing by me. Yeah. So, out lawyer to need your response, we need to hear more details. Yeah, and I think there, you know, there's a flip side of that too, which is you certainly don't want to, if, if things are looking like they're headed toward litigation, then you do need a particular type of attorney. You need a litigator who's good at their job. However, if you're, things are looking very amicable and it could be mediated, you don't wanna put a litigator on the, on the job. That may take you down a, the wrong path. That being said, you know, in terms of money, this isn't. This also isn't the time to penny pinch because often the lower charging attorneys are super new. They may be fabulous, but they may have a handful of cases under their belt. And if you've got a fairly sophisticated case with kids and your finances are somewhat complex, or you know you've got a longer marriage, that's not something for somebody straight out of law school. So it's a very. It's a, like we say, we take care to make a good fit. On all the reasons Lisa said, somebody that you really can partner with, this is somebody you're going to be in a relationship, a professional relationship with for a little while. You want to feel like they are smart. You want to feel like you can trust them. You want to feel like they understand everything that's going on and have your back. And at the same time, you want to make sure it's the right person from the get-go. So, and, and one last thing, you do want a lawyer who's a matrimonial or divorce attorney, right? You don't want someone who who... Uncle Joe. <laughs> Uncle Joe, who does a, a, a myriad of things, yeah. of kinds of law. Yeah. You want a specialist. Yeah. That is black and white. Absolutely. And then another part of that, which uh, Lisa pointed to, they know each other, but they know the courts and they know the judges. And they know the judge. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Hope, that hope those answers were helpful. Yes, thank you. And the last question we have here is, do you have any suggestions for legal help if I can't afford an attorney? Again, that depends on where you live. Yes, we do. Uh, but again, it depends on where you live. Uh, and um, if you don't follow up by calling us for a free consultation, what you can do is Google and look for nonprofits dedicated to legal aid in your local area. Uh, you can call up lawyers and ask their secretaries for suggestions. The other thing is there's, I know the American Bar Association, or I think it might be in New York, but I would check. The American Bar Association has a referral service, I believe. So it's significantly discounted. I think you can talk to an attorney for like 30, 40 bucks um, and get some at least beginning advice. 
um, and a referral. So there, it's going to take a little, depending on where you are, a little homework on your part to, to be Googling, but there are things that ex exist there for low um, and sometimes even free cost divorces. And it also depends on how, com how complex your case is. So. Yeah, and, and another thing is it's not just the legal dilemma, right? It's a financial one. So really critical to this is how, how is it gonna impact you financially? So you can get a head start in understanding what's possible by talking to a financial expert and a lot of them will talk to you for free. They've helped people who are getting divorced. Go to the website. Mm -hmm. uh, go to Savvy Ladies. Go to, go to Savvy Ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, the founder, Stacy Francis, is a help me with the acronym, Kim. CDFA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a certified divorce financial analyst. They, they're also called financial planners, mm -hmm. uh, but they help, uh, they can help people who are navigating divorce. They have a software program that helps you make forecasts based on different decisions. And that can then inform you. So when you go back to the legal dilemma, you know what's possible and you know better how to advocate for yourself. Yeah. Do you have time for one last question that just came in? Sure. We have all day. <laughs> Great. The question is, how do you find a divorce coach in central New Jersey? Lucky for you, we have an office in central New Jersey. <laughs> Just kidding. As a, here's the thing. Many divorce coaches work on the phone these days. We certainly do. And clearly, I'm going to plug ourselves. But you can go online and you can put in divorce coach and you can say central New Jersey. We recommend uh, that that person be certified. A lot of people call themselves coaches these days, but they don't have training. Kim and I have a master's in education with a focus in gender studies, and we are certified coaches. Very important. Most coaches these days will also give you a free consultation. So sample their wares, see if you're connecting, see if they give you a game plan of how you might navigate going forward. Um, and call us for a free consultation and we can help you with next, next steps. Even if you choose not to work with us, we can further you in the journey. Absolutely. Good luck, everybody. We hope to connect with you soon. Yeah, remember, stay, find your support, find your sisterhood, find your connection, and then stay tethered to it. Okay. Good luck to you. Great, thank you. Well, I wanna thank you again, Kim and Lisa, for a really excellent presentation. And also thank you for your offer to the Savvy Ladies community. Um, I wanna thank everyone who joined us today. Thank you for taking the time to answer all of our questions. And thank you again so much. Our pleasure. Thanks, have a good afternoon. Bye, Bye everybody.